The good dish is turning up the heat. Everything you need to know to cook the perfect steak. From the best cuts. The fat is where the flavor lives. To a celebrity chef's secrets. Butter makes it better. To the goodness. And when we gather over food, magic happens. We're dishing with Chef Andrew Zimmer. Plus, and it's just a pillowy bite. Jamika is cooking up her favorite banana fritters. It's delicious. That's next. Let's dish. The kitchen has always been at the center of my world because life is more delicious when it's full of food and fun. <laughs> Everybody knows me as a culinary expert and food judge on television, but also I'm just a mom trying to get dinner on the table. From Hollywood to home, I bring Southern sweet and Caribbean heat, and I'm not afraid to stir the pot. Good food, good friends, good dish. Good dish. Get ready for a show packed with sizzling food, fun, and surprises. Mm -hmm. We are starting with breaking down everything you need to know to cook the perfect steak. Let's hear that sizzle one more time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are talking steakhouse quality steak from your very own kitchen. We love steak. We are big steak fans around here. What, what, what do we love so much about it? Why is it the perfect like date night meal, boys night out meal, girls night out meal? It just really does it all. It's the sizzle, it's the sound, it's the smell. Oh. I mean, I mean, I'm trying everything not to eat the steak right in front of me because we got a show to do. I mean, can we relish in that sizzle for another second? Because I just can't get enough of that back. sound like that. Mm. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Oh, what now? Yes. Oh, look at this. It's, it's the that. slow melting bubble. Oh, oh, bubbling the butter. Money. Oh my goodness, my, 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 that cascading salt. I mean, it looks so expensive, but uh, if I can recreate this in my own kitchen, I never have to go out again, right? Well, I mean, maybe if I want to wear my cute shoes. That's but what I still, mean. I mean, the steak, it's beautiful, right? I, it's Gorgeous. beautiful. And I feel like I could, I feel like you have a whole new TikTok channel now, just Jamaica reacting to steak videos. I can <laughs> definitely <laughs> hang out and listen to you describe your gorgeous steak all day, which makes me think, what do you think is the best steak you've ever had? Obviously, we've had a chance to try lots of delicious food in our lives and together. What's your, like, what's the best one? My mind goes to this one steak. It was a steak of a lifetime. I'll never forget it. I was in college and we were on like this internship recruiting thing, trying to get a job at this okay. company, right? So we go to this really expensive steakhouse and they're like, order whatever you want. Now don't tell oh, a broke open. college yeah. student to <laughs> order Bar, whatever you want, order okay? You want. <laughs> so I took full advantage. I got the, it was a bone in prime ribeye steak. Yes, you did. It was so beautiful. And I threw the lobster tail on top of it, okay? <laughs> but it turns out I ended up getting the job though. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I got it because the recruiter said, um, you're talented, your resume is great, but anybody that has the confidence to order the most yes. expensive thing on the menu, that's the kind of person we want working you with You know your us. work. So, yes. I like that. Oh, and I still remember that steak. It was everything. <laughs> yes. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, I will say, I've had some really great steak in my life, but definitely the steak that made me understand and truly appreciate a gorgeous steak. My first real job was working for the food critic at Vogue magazine. And one of the first few months that I was working there, we did an article about how to cook the perfect steak. Mm. And my boss, an um, incredible food critic named Jeffrey Steingarten, had a real young up and comer at the time, Tom Colicchio, age oh. some <laughs> special steaks for wow. us You're and kidding. cook them at different ages and different cuts so that we could do a taste test. And that was the first time I met Tom Colicchio and we ended up having, you know, we've oh, now had a 20 yes. year friendship obviously, but um, he made us these beautiful dry aged porterhouse steaks. And again, just out of college, this was oh. something I never would have ever had the chance to taste. And I remember thinking like, I will never look at steak or Tom Colicchio. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yes. I will say there's like the variation in, in exactly what you say, the way that it's aged, the way that it's mm -hmm. cooked can so dramatically change a cut of meat, which we're gonna talk about. We're gonna go through some of the most expensive cuts of beef, also the least expensive cuts. I will tell you the thing that makes a perfect steak for me 
is the extra dirty, extra cold martini that goes oh, with there's it. Oh, there's no question. Number one, yeah, yeah, that's my order. Definitely. <laughs> I knew it's you and I old school were meant so to be. Good. All right. It's so good. Well, you get your martini at some point in this show. But now, a good steak, it does not have to cost an arm and a leg. In fact, you might be surprised when you hear which steak gives the best bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. All right? So let's start with the priciest steaks. That would be the ribeye, the filet mignon, and the New York strip, OK? Oh. Now, they cost a lot because they come from the parts of the cow that haven't been worked very hard. So the meat is naturally tender and it contains little to no connective tissue that needs to be broken mm -hmm. down or, or cooked down, if you will. And on this opposite end are the budget buys. This is your chuck eye, your tri-tip. These definitely require a little more attention as you prep them, you marinate them, as you cook them, so that they don't become tough to chew because they are already coming with quite a bit of connective tissue. Yeah. But let me tell you that connective tissue also brings a ton of flavor. There is so much you can do with these cuts of meat to make them really sing as delicious meals, one of which is to salt an hour before you want to cook them. That helps to tenderize the beef, really keep them really juicy and delicious. Yes, yum, it's true. But I will say my favorite cut of meat, of steak, to cook on a budget is the skirt steak oh, or the, the hanger best. steak oh, yeah. right down there. Good choice. Now, they fall sort of in the middle range of the pricing scale, and they're sort of underused and I think underappreciated, but super flavorful. You're kind of getting the best of both worlds. They marinate really well. They make the mm. perfect weeknight meal when you want a little steak indulgence and some steakhouse feel to your dinner. Oh, wow. Can we have a controversial conversation? Yes. Well, what are you about to start now? You always start. Are you guys so ready for this? Okay, come on. Filet mignon. Discuss. <gasps> Discuss the fact that this is the most expensive cut of meat. People can't, like, the, when you go out to a fancy dinner, the first time you ever go, it's like, oh, the filet. Mm -hmm. It has no fat to it. has no flavor to it. It's one-dimensional. Yeah, that is it, exactly it, right. Yes. I mean, it's tender. That's why I think it's so coveted. Mm -hmm. It's really tender and buttery to cut through. But the thing is, you really need the fat marbled throughout. The fat is where the flavor lives, the True. beefiness, and you just don't get that. Well, with that's flavor. why it shouldn't just stand alone. So if you can get it bacon wrapped or you can get it uh, butter basted, it, it just needs a little, little love. <laughs> All right, well, my favorite way to dress a steak, to make a simple sauce that you can make any night of the week, it's a chimichurri. It is so simple to make. I bet you have almost all the ingredients in your pantry already. It's an uncooked sauce that originates in Argentina and Uruguay, and it is so fresh and it really packs a punch. So here's how to make it. I'm gonna make it in two seconds flat. Tons of fresh parsley into your food processor. I'm also gonna add oregano. Those are the two prime herbs. I'm gonna add some Fresno chili here. Garlic, another key ingredient in making the chimichurri sing. A big pinch of salt, and I'm going big because you want it to give a punch and then some red wine vinegar. That's all gonna go right into your food processor. And then you're gonna chop it up finely. Now notice I did not put my olive oil in here yet. This sauce is not meant to be emulsified. It's not meant to come together and become creamy, mm -hmm. which will happen if you put your olive oil yeah. in the food processor with everything else. It's supposed to be a broken, oily sauce, and you'll see what I mean in a sec. It's not, it's not a pesto. It should just kind of spoon exactly over right. and glide over the estate. There you go. Working, no. <laughs> working overtime today. I'm well, you want, you, you want to pulse it well, but you want to still make sure that it's a little bit chunky so here, easy. you see? Yeah, for sure. That's all you do, and then I'm gonna spoon it into a bowl. Let me take the blade out because that's gonna fall there right in. There we go. Spoon it right into your bowl, nice and so chunky, fresh. but I it's can consistent. Smell it over yep. Here. Delicious. And there you go. Then I poured my oil over it. You're noticing I'm not whisking the oil. Again, you don't need to emulsify this like a salad dressing. It really just gets poured right over. Give it a stir, and then let it sit out on the counter at room temperature for about 20 minutes. Okay. Serve it with your steak, and I'm telling you, ladies, We're gonna right. eat some I'm steak. like finish <laughs> it with a pinch of salt, and it is so. Delicious, it Thanks. will change your steak night forever. I'm like, I don't want to be rude, but I'm like, no, get up. No, 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 rude, yeah. Eat this so, thing. <laughs> you can always eat while I'm talking. You never you have to you. wait. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll give you a piece over there. Oh, you got oh, it? Thanks, Mama. Thank you so much. And one for you. One for All right, yourself. let's go Thank for this you, chimichurri. Friends. All right. It's delicious, Gail. Mm -hmm. So good. All right, you guys, coming up, the master of all things meat is here. Celebrity chef Josh Capon is bringing the best of the best and teaching everyone how to cook a perfect steak at home. Don't go away. This is Like something you saw on the show today? We're dishing all the details on The Good List. All the recipes, important tips, and tricks, all in one place. So stay tuned until the end of the show when we'll share The Good List QR code. You can scan to send it all right to your phone.
are back dishing the secrets to cooking perfect restaurant quality steak, but from your very own home. And there is no one better suited to talk all things meat than the man sitting next to me, our special guest, <laughs> Chef Josh Capon. I'm so happy you're here. I see you. It's so nice to see you. You guys, he is the founder of legendary restaurants like the Bowery Meat Company here in New York, known for its steak, phenomenal meat. Welcome to the show, Josh Capon. We're just... First of all, the fact that we're like tete a tete about how to cook meat and perfect steak at home is, which I think is something that like, like a roast chicken just makes you feel so confident. When you can turn out a gorgeous restaurant quality steak, you are in business. What do you think are like the first mistake home chefs are making when they're trying to cook meat at home and it just doesn't, it doesn't sing the way that restaurants Listen, I'm, I'm just glad to finally be having dinner with you, Daphne. I know, it took all this, to get this all it dinner took. for a really long time. It just took you getting your own show to do so. <laughs> you know. It was just it was rather nice. So <laughs> ladies hooked cheers, us up. <laughs> cheers to cheers all you ladies. To, yes. For the good dish, cheers. very exciting Thank time you. to add lots of good memories. Thanks for having me. Yes, indeed. <laughs> We're gonna order ahead of time, by the way, if that's okay. What are we getting? We're gonna have two filet mignons well done. <laughs> Okay? If you're paying, fine. I, 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 it's more, you know what it was? It's, it's what I've thought about it more. It's really that it makes me sad and mad that they're going to part you with your well earned cash for something that's not going to taste nearly as good as something that just has more fat in it. I think it's a misunderstood <laughs> steak. I really do. It's a misunderstood steak because there is something luxurious about it, but it doesn't have the fat content that we're all looking for. Yeah. But when it comes to cooking steaks at home, I think the most important thing that people often mistake is season your steak very aggressively mm -hmm. with kosher salt and black pepper right yes. off the bat. People don't understand how much salt, how much meat salt really needs to bring out those natural flavors. And you have to cook with high temperatures. All right, that sounds good. Well, grab your wine. Let's get to some That's steak. It. Dinner's over? Dinner's over. It was fabulous. I'm going to my big did. clams. <laughs> <laughs> Very slow, I gotta tell you. Guys, gotta pick up your table. Oh, come on here, come where you're comfortable, right? Not even a little right? bread, not even a little butter, nothing, I got nothing. There all right, go. so let's talk, really. Let's talk. First of all, I also have a philosophy in life. Mm -hmm. And by the way, life is a party. I do agree with you. You better live it like one, by the way. absolutely. Every day, every day. When it comes to cooking steak, cook one steak for two people instead of two steaks for two people. It, Why? This is a huge tip, and I love this. Thank you. Tell us. School of Tell school. us. Because when you cook one steak for two people, you cook a big, fat, thick steak, mm -hmm. and you're able to get that char and crust that we're looking for and still maintain a medium rare or medium on the inside. That's a pro tip right pro there. Pro tip. Also, bone you know, in, by the way. If you can, always go bone in. Bone, more flavor, more fat. Good amount of fat. We always talk about the marbling. Marbling equals... Flavor. Right? Flavor, fat content, flavor, the more flavor. marbling, the more fat, the more flavor. That fat cooks and melts, it reduces, reduces a very juicy, tender steak. Mm -hmm. And season it from above. Like People that. think this is a salt, too much salt. It's not. It's a big, thick steak. Let it snow, it Daphne. Come on. <laughs> if you're not it's using a, a fresh pepper mill, if you're not using a fresh pepper mill, I'm going to come over to your house and punch you in the face because we don't <laughs> buy ground fresh pepper, right? Yes. You need to release Amen. those oils Preach. and all those aromatics. Remind we'll everyone what we're making today. Sorry, this is a bone-in dry age New York strip. Cool. Yes. All right, absolutely right. nothing better. I am a ribeye guy, but sometimes there could be just a little bit too much fat in there. Mm -hmm. Go bone in dry age New York strip all day, every day. What does the aging process do specifically? I think it concentrates the flavor, gets rid of some of the moisture. You're going to get a really nice crust on it mm -hmm. and gives it a little bit of that funk, right? All right. All right. I got a question. And also, hold on. Oh, wait, Season your fat. Wait, wait, there's, more. there's not two sides to a steak. There's like five sides to oh, a steak. Season that steak that. all over the place. People miss that. I'm and sorry, so, now you generously, you put salt all over that. All over that place. Place. Tell people when should you season the steak? I see people put the salt, the pepper, and then walk away Very and then good do question. other things. Very good when question. should you put it in before I think you, you season, season it? Yeah. Go, go, yeah, long it up over here. here we go. I think you should season your steak relatively well, right before you put it in the pan. Most importantly, oh. by the way, we never cook a steak right outside from the refrigerator. We let our meat yes. pepper. 20 minutes on the cutting board. It also also like a show off. Like, first of all, obviously I'm a restaurant chef. I've been loving cooking at home these past two years more than ever for mm -hmm. friends and for family. And when you do so, put on a cooking show. If people come to your house, there's no reason why the steak shouldn't be sitting on the counter so people can admire them, them what and see what's coming with. later on for dinner. Yes. So super hot pan. Am I cranked over here? Crank me up if I'm not. Crank, crank, crank. Okay. It's coming, it's there we go. All right, now look at that. See oh, that? Oh, yeah. See that? Oh, look that at is all what we were looking for. Listen for the sizzle. See? Listen for the sizzle. That's authentic sizzle. If you're not oh. making those sounds, that's what you're looking for. Cast iron pan all day, every day. Well, that was my question. Right? You mentioned it before. Why a cast iron pan? I just think a cast iron pan is going to develop flavor. It's unlike stainless steel. It gets super, super hot, and it really gives a lot of flavor to the steak. Mm -hmm. Once you flip it, once you get that caramelization on all sides, you also want to, after you get both sides, edges. you get so the fat a little bit, right? Roll yeah. the brown on all sides. Then you take that bad boy. 
Uh oh, watch right. out, Ben. Right, right, away with our right into the oven. <laughs> How right long was it oven. on each side? I had the magic of television, I tell you. Look at this. His own steak world. There Look at that. Thing. Come on. <laughs> yeah. This Come on. is the kind of guest I want coming to my house That's every day. <laughs> All right. Amazing. That goes right back on the bone. We give it a little feel. We're right there, right? Everybody knows a little rare, right? Mm -hmm. Rare, the more you cook a protein, the more resistance it gives off. So you have a little resistance. Rare, yep. medium, medium well. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I do, I do. Wait, wait, I do. Uh, rare. Yeah. More fun, yeah. more fun. Medium. No, no, no. Yeah. You gotta have it out. Rare, rare the like my gut. You gotta medium, tell the people. Medium like your nose. <laughs> and then close to medium well is your ear. Huh. Huh. Okay. Most importantly, look at this. Medium well, table. rare. Okay. What you got? This is what we're looking for. This is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. See that? Perfect. That's what you're looking for over there. Then when it comes off the heat, what you want to do, butter makes it better. We Always. all know that. If you don't want to, you don't have to. What we want to do now is brown a few garlic cloves, mm -hmm. okay? We're going to brown our butter. We're going to toast our garlic cloves, just like that. Oh, we smash that them a little bit. Sight. And then, come on, how nice. Go for it, that is come on, come on, that is go for it. Come on, come on, go for it. porn right there. You want to jump in that pan? I want to, like, take a picture. I want to take a picture. Here we go. Do it. Do it. The side is what dreams are made of. Yes. That is what dreams are made of. Yes. That, baby. Oh, The good dish has lost its mind All right, come on, here we go. Beautiful. And what you want to do is you want to just gently toast those herbs. I'm going to toast those herbs and the butter and the beef. Oh, my goodness. Come on. My goodness. Oh, some, that people, smell. some people used to watch Skinamax like that. that. I used to just yeah. watch the food out of like that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. This turns, this turns me on more than anything else. Base is slow. Right? Oh. Then what you want to do is you want to lower the heat on that stove. Come on, get oh, in there. Oh, wow. Get that camera oh, Let's whoa. go. Come on, look at that. That's what you're oh, looking for. Oh, oh. That <laughs> frothy effect. You are just yes. basing this steak with butter and garlic oh, and rosemary gosh. and thyme. And if you think about it, it's still cooking. And all that flavor is just seeping into the meat. Ooh. And it's lovely. Come on. That's you make sexy. it look beautiful. So Come on. Beautiful. The term is arrosé, but I, it's a French term. I just say basting. Gosh, we you love finish you. it like this. We love how you cook. Oh, my gosh. And by the way, if you do have friends over, you can have it to the point where you pull it out of the oven, but just show off that technique. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I come to your house and I see you doing that, it's impressive. I'm going to say I should have brought a nicer bottle of wine because these guys are not playing. <laughs> yeah, we're flavors. shelling up for you. So now, okay, so you finished That is gorgeous. It. You pull it off at what? Yep. You want it off at medium rare? Rare, probably. So as it rests, it comes I think you pull it off way. medium rare. Okay. I mean, depending on how you like to eat your meat. Okay. You know, everybody's a little different. Don't I think medium rare, getting let it rest a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> resting is important. How? Don't, uh, yes. Why don't is get, resting get important, Gail? Come on, take it away. Because you want the juices to not Run out. You want to make sure that they redistribute and stay in, in there. your meat. God, it's like that. I love her. I'm listening. I pay so important. Okay, we I don't eat think together. people gotta, realize that. You don't, you don't want a juicy cutting board. You want a juicy steak. We are waiting with bated breath. Come on. Okay, go off the bone. I get the bone. No, I get the bone. And then just like this. Right? Come on. Look at that perfectly well rested steak. You are not playing games. You go like that. You go like that. You go like that. Everybody takes a little piece of steak. Oh, oh, my goodness. You can cheers with red wine, but I cheers. say we cheers with red meat. Yes. Yes. Ooh, Daphne, oh, coming up with a little wow. salt touch in oh. the air. Oh. Right, to the good dish, dish, everybody. To the good dish. Thank you, Chef k so oh Of course, God. you guys, he is the chief culinary officer and one of the founders of the upcoming Fly Fish Club restaurant. Check out their website for more information. Eat this delicious steak. It's phenomenal. All right, coming up, famed foodie and chef Andrew Zimmerman. Couldn't get it out. Andrew Zimmerman is here. Easy in the house. Yes, yes. we'll be right back. Cheers to the good dish. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yes, done. no stranger to the foods you'll find off the beaten path. Some might even call them bizarre. He's dined on tuna sperm, cow urine, among hundreds of other particular and peculiar, de peculiar delicacies. But in his new show, he's coming to your home for family dinner. Please welcome award-winning chef, host of Family Dinner, and my dear friend, Andrew Zimmern. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> We're so happy to have you with us today. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. Congratulations on all of the success of the new show. I'm thrilled. This is great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So now you've gone from sharing meals in some of the most remote locations around the world to coming home and breaking bread with families around America. To this day, like, what is the most bizarre food you've ever eaten? 
I, I think it's still all the Dr. Seuss foods. You know, it's it's not the ones that are necessarily uh, uh, unexpected or kind of gnarly in some sort of butcher shop way, but it's usually the things that you never knew existed. It wasn't until I got into uh, tiny little islands in the South China Sea that I knew that there were such a thing called shipwreck worms and that you oh. could eat them. So it's usually those kinds of things that were always the ones that stick in my mind. Andrew, off camera, you didn't see my face. Listening to you describe those foods, I'm like, ooh, that sounds <laughs> they the close -up quite on me, yeah. bizarre. <laughs> oh yes, and we have some gifts here. For, this, this is what, salted egg salmon skin. Like this is quite bizarre, right up your alley. I mean, did he send this to us? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, thank I'm you. Just like, yes. <laughs> thank you so for this delightful. Thank you. Tell okay. us a bit you about can, them. <laughs> you can thank me for this later. Um, it, one of my favorite snacks mm. in the whole world is Singapore's favorite mm. chip. Uh, these are naturally fried I mean, salmon skins dusted with salted fermented egg yolks, and they're seasoned with chili, salt, and uh, dried curry leaves. Mm, and uh, the, the company that makes them is called Irvin's. I ate them years ago, the first time I went to Singapore. And there are several of us who have a secret little Irvin's eating club. And my, my friend, Chef Melissa King, sent me these as a gift for Christmas because she knows how much I love them. I okay. love these. They're delicious. They're okay. delicious. They're, They're not half bad. Next time, leave out some of the details. I don't need to know everything that's <laughs> yeah. there. Just tell me to eat them and I'll eat them. They're pretty good though, actually. All right, Andrew, we are so excited to share the kitchen with you today. You are one of my favorite people to watch cook and share cooking with. And you're bringing us your shrimp scampi with lemony breadcrumbs and angel hair pasta. Mm. For everyone at home, Tell us about this gorgeous classic dish. Well, it, it's really rather simple. Um, I, I keep lemony garlic breadcrumbs around in my kitchen all the time. You can keep them in bags in your freezer. Uh, when I first went to Sardinia in Sicily, you know, they, they put I'm following uh, you. breadcrumbs on all of their pastas. And I was like, wow, the textural contrast here is fantastic. Then I started putting them in salads, sprinkling them over everything. Mm -hmm. And it's just such an easy recipe you know, bread cubes that you tear or cut, some herbs. The staler, I love the better, the right? Oh, absolutely. And I love the mixture of tarragon and parsley and rosemary and thyme. You really can't put enough herbs in there. Uh, lemon zest is a must, and I have the zest of an entire lemon. Mm. It makes such a difference. Garlic, minced, and then I tend to pulse a couple of times before I start to add my olive oil and just let it run. All right, here I go, here I go. And that olive oil allows everything to become covered in its fat as well as homogeneously sized. And the wonderful thing about that is that you have, you can see this green tinge, oh, and some great. crumbs are chunky, oh, some are really fine, wow. but that just goes into a 375 mm, degree oven garlic. for eight, nine, 10, 12 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. And what you wind up with Hold on, hold these, on, wait for me, wait on, for me. We're catching up. While we're, gonna, we're gonna put them in the oven and we're gonna come back, so hold on, let me do that. Um, they smell phenomenal. I cannot wait to finish up this pasta dish. We are going to let these delicious breadcrumbs get golden and brown. And when we come back, Andrew will show us how to make the rest of this dish. We cannot wait to taste the results. We'll be right back. Um, but we are back with Andrew Zimmern. And that was a clip from his new show, Family Dinner. Now, it looks delicious. And it's so fun just to get to explore people's actual home meals and the meals that are passed down generation to generation. How important it is to their family story, how important it is their identity, to their sense of gathering and worth, to their, to their spiritual practice. When we gather over food, magic happens. I have a hundred percent. And you, you forget how much gathering together feeds you as much as the food that you're actually eating. I do just want to ask one thing because you look markedly different now than you did in that footage. When did, yeah. when did the beard happen? <laughs> At the, it, it, it's been on and off for COVID, you know, different TV jobs require different hair. The last time I saw Gail, it was even longer yep. and crazier and It was and, just and like wilder. two months ago. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had it trimmed 
for you guys. I mean, Very handsome. We appreciate Very that. Handsome. You look good. It's Andrew love Incognito, it. your next show. I like it. So, <laughs> so now one of the things that you do love cooking for your family is this just, just unbelievably delicious smelling, satisfying shrimp scampi. We have pulled yep. out the breadcrumbs from the oven and they have toasted their golden brown and fragrant with that garlic and mm. that lemon. Please talk us through what to do next so we can dig on on this bowl. Well, I've started sauteing. I did during the break my, my shallots and my garlic. And um, I take a few whole dried chilies, uh, oh. ones that aren't too hot. Don't what? crush them or ah, the dish will be all right. spicy. We'll do it next time. Now we know the secret. Okay. Okay. Hey, yeah. I need that. Okay. That's I good. let that sit in there. And once the garlic and the uh, yeah. shallots have sort of become melting, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want, I don't want to burn my garlic. I don't want to torch anything. Then I add my shrimp, mm. peeled and deveined, nice. uh, you know, and just let them start to gather that thermal momentum that's in the pan. Thermal now, momentum. The, <laughs> oh my gosh. the theme of 2022, <laughs> thermal momentum. <laughs> yes. Thermal, thermal momentum. Yes. Gail, you have lots of thermal yeah. momentum. Yeah, now, I feel it. I feel it. One of, the things, one of the things that I tell people is that we're not putting a hard sear on the shrimp. These are almost poaching in this mm. incredible sauce that we're going to make. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to add out, a big, healthy <laughs> tablespoon of those herbs. Herbs in. Oh, right over there. Herbs. Do it. I added the wine. Get in there. And Flash I'm going to add, I'm going to add the Pernod. Now, the Pernod. Ooh, watch the hairdo. Uh, <laughs> this is, yeah, that's good. <laughs> this is a nut for girls with curls. Oh. Come on. Get in oh, that Pernod. Pernod. Pernod comes several in several different formats. This Thank is the you. classic pastis de Pernod. It's a it's an anise flavored mm. uh, aperitif, mm. and it gives a great sort of subtle licorice aroma and taste yeah. to this that marries so well with the tarragon. It does. Now, yeah. Tarragon is yeah. highlighted immediately. And I don't know if you can see, but I added my shrimp. And the minute your shrimp have completed curling, and mine are almost all completed. Oh yeah, we're there. Mm -hmm. Curling. All I do is add my butter. Mm, oh, get that butter in that. it. That's the gorgeous. You know, that's the beauty of a scampi sauce. Is it's really just wine and butter and herb coming together in this silky elixir to coat your pasta. Oh, what, what silky elixir? I'm all about a silky elixir. A thermal, yeah. a thermal, thermal velocity. <laughs> thermal silky elixir momentum <laughs> with your silky elixir. <laughs> the most important thing, and anyone will tell you this, is make sure you cook your cook pasta, pasta or pasta. revive your pasta in the sauce. Ready? So yeah. the most oh, important boy. thing to me right now Beautiful. is to make sure that I'm turning my angel hair. You can do this portion by portion. Mm, if you're cooking for three and there. four and you have a big enough pot, by all means do that. But the beauty of this is really to pull a portion of that angel hair and nest it in the center of that bowl. How about then the lemon juice? Your, is that going in here? Oh, yeah. I, I already added mine. I just threw that in a couple nice. seconds before I added the butter. Mm. Five shrimp is a lovely portion. You can put that there, kill the temperature on your oven, on your stovetop, and then, and this is the really important part, I have a couple more portions to squeak out of here. But take, you know, there's enough to give that tablespoon of that buttery sauce all over this dish. You don't want it wet. We just want to make sure that we have done our job in seasoning that pasta and then a nice little line of that crunchy breadcrumb oh, over there. Yes. Not, the, not the salmon skin. No. Oh, I like no. that too. Although I'm not against that By either. Way, so. Crumble that up, I would no, throw that no. right over top here. Double the salinity, double the fun. This looks delicious. The way that the shrimp has soaked in all those delicious flavors from the shallots, from the onion, the perno, the wine, it's so juicy and tender. The crispness of the breadcrumbs on that very tender angel hair pasta. This is a phenomenally delicious dish. Mm. I can't wait to make it for my family. Thank, Thank you. you. It's so great. Thank so you, AZ. Good. Mm. Andrew, my, my I, I want to give you a, a shout out. This is so exciting. Andrew was recently named Goodwill Ambassador to the United Nations World Food Program. Oh. And you can catch his show, Family Dinner, Sundays at 8 p.m. on Magnolia Network. 
And up next, uh, Andrew, thank you so much. This is thank such you, a beautiful you. dish. Thank you. Love Good you to all. see. Thank you. Up next, you guys, Jamika is giving us a taste of her recipe that, uh, oh, no, she's giving us a taste of the recipe that raised her. It is her grandma's Jamaican banana fritters. I can't wait to eat yeah, these. Stay tuned. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Special food or meals from our childhood can have an amazing ability to bring back good memories and influence who we become as adults. That's why this season we all will be opening our personal history books to go back to the recipes that raised us. And today it's Jamika's turn. Take a look. I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, and my grandmother lived with us, so that was such a treat to have her in the house with us all the time. Every Sunday, we would all get dressed up for church, and once we would get home, oh, we knew what was waiting for us. It was my grandmother's banana fritters. I mean, the whole house was just wafting with this smell, and you knew it was fritter time. <laughs> I'm the youngest of three girls, but I am not afraid to say it. I was grandma's favorite. Occasionally, um, I would get to help, so she would let me crack an egg, or mix the batter, and definitely I got to mash the bananas. But she never really measured anything, she just had this instinct. And I would just follow her every move, like, yes, Grandma, because she knew what she was doing. Like, she could make those fritters in her sleep. Over the years, I've adjusted her recipe just a little bit. I do a deep fried batter, so they come out almost like little donut holes. It's almost like a fried banana bread. It's so soft, but it's crunchy and golden brown on the outside. On the rare occasion when the entire family can get together, I think I'm gonna get to make my grandmother's banana fritters. And then when we get to talking and laughing, like, remember when you broke this? Or remember when you got in trouble? You already had four! Wait, I just And I mean, we just have such a good time. And it's a great way, we just pay a little homage to my grandmother. I know she's looking down. She's just smiling and laughing and just having a great time knowing that we are still making some of her recipes. Mmm. Grandma, I made you proud on this one. So good. Mm. <laughs> wow. I mean, that is so beautiful. Honestly, that's like me, one of my favorite parts of the show is getting to see that family heritage that shapes you into the chef you've now become. What would your grandmother say if she saw that you're now a chef? Oh gosh, I'm holding it together because I could cry watching that, that video. <laughs> it's so like, great. I think she, she would be proud and she would look at me and say, eh, hey, hey, girl. You're doing me proud. You're doing good, girl. You're doing good. That's what she would say to me. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, and now, Grandma. the fact that you and your sister still make those fritters together. It just brings us all together and we tell stories and we laugh and say, remember when you broke that? And I'm like, hold on, don't confess <laughs> that on that. me. So, yeah, <laughs> we just had the best time and just talking about my grandmother and our childhood, like, oh, those fritters. Well, everybody knows cooking with grandma is so much more than just cooking. What do you think was the greatest lesson in your childhood that your grandma taught you? Um, I think it was, she had this patience about her and like she never measured anything and she would always count, bring me into the kitchen because I will say I was her favorite. I, I will oh, admit it. Sisters. Sisters. Yeah, I'll get a call after the show, but I'm going to say that I was her favorite. But she would always say, come, let me teach you sense. Let me, and she would just break down every recipe, how she would do. She inspired me like I wanted to, I just love how she just changed everything in the room, no matter how your, your day was going, the food, everything just was so much better. Like that's what inspired me to become a chef, that I can just move the room and change everything. Didn't matter what happened, but as soon as you sat down and ate that meal, like everything was okay. Move the room. Yes. I, love I, like I, that. I, uh, I know that feeling. Oh well, I cannot wait to taste these. Oh, we yeah. are making Jamaica's banana fritters Woo! when we come back. Yeah. Jamaica's favorite family recipe, a recipe that raised her, Jamaican banana fritters. It smells phenomenal in this kitchen, you guys. <laughs> Jamaica, how do we make these glorious fried little balls? All right, so they'll, you'll start with mashed bananas, and this is a great recipe to get rid of that banana that's just about at her prime. You'll mash them up in the bowl. I have two bananas mashed here, okay. and then we'll do our dry ingredients. So I have some all-purpose flour going in, a little bit of salt, and some 
baking powder so it'll get a nice little rise. And here I have the spice. This is actually apple pie spice, which Ooh. is a combination of nutmeg, cinnamon, mm. allspice, a little ginger, and cardamom. So you'll start to mix that together. We'll also go in with our wet ingredients two eggs going in, and some milk. And I love this recipe because it's so simple. I know everyone at home has these uh, ingredients yep. already in their refrigerator and in their pantry. So you have no excuse not to make my grandma fritters, okay? No excuse. So give that a nice twirl around, make sure the batter all comes together, and then you have, using vegetable oil, you want to put it a few inches if you have a heavy bottom Dutch oven. We're using an ice cream scoop. And we're using it because it will come out really easily. Gail, it's the perfect technique. Uh, she's been... I got some top, but you taught me. You but taught no, me. you will dip the empty scoop into the oil first. That way it won't stick. Mm -hmm. And then you go right into the batter. Get a nice little swirl there. And then drop and release. Yum. Right? And you're just going to fry them up until they're starting to float to the top. You can start pulling them out because you don't mm -hmm. want them to go too dark in color. And we did not add any sugar to the batter because in the end, you'll drain them on a paper towel and then we'll roll them in some granulated sugar. Oh so you get a goodness. nice little Watch bite in there. Hot, yes. Hot, hot tomorrow. Coming hot, in hot, hot. Hot coming in there hot, girls. Go. All right. And the hot one. As you can see, now you Girl. can put it in the sugar oh. in a bowl, but ooh, as you ooh. can see, we've got brown paper bags here. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll give it a nice little twirl. Okay. Let's say what? Two fritters per bag, three There's fritters per bag. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Let's but you'll them. just give them a up. nice little shake. Like shake, 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 up. shake, shake, shake. That's great for a mess, oh, right? There we go. Clean up. You keep everything in the bag, and then my brother, at my grandmother would say, as you take your bag, she'll say, all right, go, go, get out my kitchen, go, go, go. <laughs> so you'll take your fritters to go with you. Happily. Well, that, that was the wrong strategy, because if she's making food this delicious, you're always coming back. Do you make these with oh, your girls right now? Not. I do. I'm, I'm, well, a little Stella. I mean, she loves she, them. She in that loves video. them. Not Put all the sugar on first, Ooh. and then go Ooh. right for it. Mm. 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 And it's just a pillowy bite. You're kidding. Me. And you leave some of those bits of bananas in there, so you it's crunchy on the outside and sugary, and then just melts in your mouth, just soft and fluffy on the inside. Look, everyone's face is like phenomenal. The banana, <laughs> it's like so subtle, mm -hmm. and warming, all those warm spices you used. It's perfect. And even if you're not like a, I know a lot of people are like, I don't really like banana. Like, like you said, it's very subtle. You just get this nice fried dough ball and it's just so sweet and it is the, it is. Grandma, I miss you. This is we so miss great. You too, <laughs> no, seriously. This is absolutely mm. delicious. Can I just say one thing? If you have a Sunday donut tradition, swap it out. Make these. They are so <laughs> delicious. Thank you for sharing this gorgeous recipe. Oh, I'm so happy to do this. And thank you, Grandma. Yes, yes thank and you, Mom. Grandma, thank, uh, you, thank you, thank you. She's so good. good. Up next, you guys get all the recipes and info featured on today's show sent directly to your phone. Stay tuned for the good list. <laughs> Andrew Zimmern had us try something none of us had ever had before, the salted mm. egg and salmon skin chips that we love. I'm like, next time, don't even tell me what it is. Just give it to me, and I'm going to eat them all. I don't need all the details. Well, <laughs> like, so that's a really good point, because there's a piece of you that's like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like what it sounds like. I'm not sure. We do, in fact, like these, but I'm curious, what do you do when someone serves you a food that you don't like? Is there a, is there a polite way to decline. <laughs> uh, I think it depends it? on context, like where it's getting served. If I go to someone's house for dinner and yeah. they've cooked it with love, I'm going to eat it. Oh, and yes, I'm going to be grateful and I'm going to be gracious. Uh, and I'm going to give it a try because you never know. And if someone put their heart into it, if someone wants to have me over for dinner, which is so rare that other people want to cook for me, I'm going to eat it. Yeah, we'll see. I don't want to say because then I'm going to out myself. Because next time, <laughs> no, I, here, I just kind of move it around on my plate, talk a whole lot, like, oh, yes. just keep moving it, don't really eat it, and then say, you know what? This is so good. I'm going to take it home with me. Can I wrap this up? <laughs> and then, yeah, they never know that I didn't. Well, now I can never do that that again. I got to come up with a new trick. <laughs> oh, way to go. This show outed me. Girl. Uh, but both, <laughs> both, you know, beautiful techniques that clearly experts have developed along the way. Um, and you know what? At the end of the day, I think people, who've invited you over to cook for you are just like happy to gather with you, happy mm -hmm. to have you share at their table. 
That's what it's yeah. about. They just, relax. They just want you. They, they just, just want to hang and have some good right. conversation. Exactly. And you know what? You might develop a taste. Like 10 bites in, you might be like, I actually love <laughs> this I meal. Mean, <laughs> enough wine. Enough wine, I, I, love love wine, I will love anything. That's, right. That's true enough. There you go. <laughs> all right, you guys, it is time again for The Good List. We put everything from today's show all in one place so you can get cooking right away. Take out your phones and scan the QR code on your screen right now with your photo app to see the recipes and everything we featured on today's show. So what are we making for dinner tonight? Well, a steakhouse quality steak you can make right at home, mm. courtesy Josh Capon. That was a phenomenally <laughs> beautiful, mind-blowing. <laughs> it really was. I learned so much. I revealed that skirt or hanger steak are gonna give you the best bang for your buck. It's affordable, they're tender cuts, they hold marinades well, they're quick to cook. I love them topped with a simple chimichurri. You can also head to GoodDishTV.com to get it all. And one more shout out to sure. Jamaica's Oh banners, yeah, the most delicious banana fritters. If you, everyone has to have some fritters. If not on a Sunday, every day is good for a fritter. All right, so it was such a good day and we will see you next time for some good food and good dish. Mm, and good fritters. Thank yes. you, Grandma.